Hey, today on Budget Nerd, we're going to go over how to install a network jack in a wall. Most everyone these days has a network of some kind in their house. I usually try to wire everything I can for my network. So where I can easily install an Ethernet jack for additional wired network access, I'm going to do it. This video will cover the basics of adding an Ethernet jack to an interior wall of a house, running the cable through the crawl space. This by far is the easiest place to run cable. Then I'd be able to get rid of this temporary cable running across my office floor. For this project, I want to run two cables from my network rack in my office closet to a wall pretty close in the same room. All of my existing network cables currently run through the crawl space, so I already have some kind of access and hole drilled for the network rack. The only cutting and drilling I'll need to do will be for the new wall jack. So let's quickly go over some of the things you'll need. A low voltage box for the wall, a punch down tool, tape measure, tape, pencil to mark the wall, drill, drill bits, longer sometimes is helpful, ethernet keystones, one for each jack you want, a keystone wall plate, uh, get one that has the appropriate number of spots, a utility knife, wire cutters, a screwdriver is always helpful, your bare ethernet cables for your run, measure how long you'll need, and a patch cable or two or more to finalize your connections. Some optional items you might find helpful would be a punch down puck, labeler, velcro, not necessary but it keeps stuff neat. Thin rope or nylon string or something to help you pull the cable. Uh, this isn't what I used, but I wanted to have something to show. You'll see what I actually used in a bit. Ethernet cable stripping tool, cable tester, and wire fishing poles to help run cables in trickier spots. That might prove helpful. I won't need them for this project, though. Alright, so sounds like a lot of stuff. But it's really not hard. The trickiest thing is running the cables. So let's start with deciding where we want to have these jacks. Here is the corner where my printer usually is. I want to add the wall plate next to the power outlet, and it looks best when they line up together. Remember, when you're doing these things, be careful around any live power, outlets or other cables or pipes running through your floor or your walls. You don't want to cut something or cause damage or hurt yourself. If you're unsure, you might consider having a professional run your cable. First, I want to find out where the vertical studs are. I want to find the empty space between them. That's where we'll run the cable. I know there's a stud on one side of the power outlet, so I can tap on the wall and I can hear the difference where there is a stud. There's a more of a, a solid sounding tap where there's a stud. The stud, in this case, is on the left side of this outlet, so I put on some tape to help visualize where it is, although it turned out the tape was a bit hard to see in the video. Next, I measure 16 inches from that spot, as that is how far apart the studs are in the homes in my neck of the woods. So here is where I want to add the wall jack and run the cable. Now this is what it would look like if we could see through the drywall. The space between the studs is 16 inches, and this is where I want to put the wall plate. I plan on drilling a hole in the base plate here and running the cable up from the crawl space. So now it's time to actually cut the hole in the drywall. I pulled off the power outlet cover so I can see the location and size of the hole I need to cut. I measure so I can get the same size and keep them aligned and I mark it. Once I have the hole traced out on the wall, I begin to cut the hole. Carefully using a utility knife is one way to go about this or you could use a drywall handsaw. It's easy to slip when starting a fresh cut through drywall. So I put very little pressure the first few passes, and as I go over it again and again, I apply more and more pressure. Once the hole is cut, we can move on to the next part. As I mentioned, I'm running two cables, just because I can. If you're running more than one cable like me, you can find the ends of your bare cable, stagger them like this, and tape them together. This will help make fishing them around the walls easier. So first, get a mental picture of where it is that you need to drill so that you can find it when you go into the crawl space. Sometimes if your hole is low enough on the wall, or your drill bud is long enough you can drill right down from the hole, or drill a tiny hole in the drywall, 
to do the same and patch it later. Make sure you know what is below so you don't drill through another wire or pipe. In my case, I went into the crawl space to drill up. So find your crawl space, take your drill and your ethernet cables with you. I found where I needed to drill. Here is the power cord. You can see going up into the same cavity we are interested in. Then I drilled up into the wall cavity. Make sure you know where you're drilling so you don't drill through something you don't want to or through your floor. Once the hole is drilled, carefully push the cable into the cavity. Pushing up a decent amount if you can. More is better, as long as you have the uh, length to spare. Come back up to the hole you've created in the wall and reach in and pull it out. But leave a little slack for posterity. Slide the cable through the wall box and push in the wall box carefully. Use the drill to secure it to the wall. And be careful not to pinch the ethernet cables. To finish this wall plate, you'll want to have your keystone wall plate, keystone or keystones, cable stripping tool, punch down tool, wire cutters, and your punch down puck if you have one. Use the wire cutters to cut off any excess cabling, then use the cable strippers to remove the outside cable covering. If you don't have wire stripping tools, you could carefully use the utility knife. Just make sure you don't cut the wires inside. Cut this little nylon string, you won't need it. So there will be four pairs of wires, orange, orange, white, green, green, white, blue, blue, white, and brown, brown, white. You'll notice the keystone will tell you what colors and what order to put the wires in, A or B. Just use the same standard on both ends and whatever standard is used in your house or building. I always use standard B. It's probably the most common. So you'll want to force the wires down into these slots in the order it says on the sides of the keystone. Try to maintain the twists as best you can. When they're in place, use your punch down tool and punch them down into the slots. A punch down puck makes this much easier. If you have a punch down tool like mine, it'll punch down the wires and cut off the excess. If your punch down tool does not do this, simply take your wire cutters when you're done punching them down and cut them off. Once they're done, and you've cut off any excess, push on these protective covers, and then snap the keystone into the wall plate cover. Make sure it's right side up, and you can put the cover in the wall. Clearly, you'll need to screw it in. And don't forget to clean up your mess. The other end of the cable depends on your setup, and where you're running it, and to cover them all is way out of scope for this video, but most often it will be something similar. You might be routing the cable to your router or switch or another device, but for me, I staggered the other end and taped it up with this pull string. If you need to use the wire fishing poles to run some cable, you can then tape the cable to the pole and then run the pole through the wall. Then I just go to the network closet and begin tugging on the string. Now I just routed the new cables and then punched them down on my patch panel and then ran a patch cable from the patch panel to the switch. Since I had a patch panel in my setup, I had to identify the ports I just set up. I knew they were 12 and 13, I just had to find out which was which. Easy enough to do when you have a cable testing tool, but it could be just as easy to identify these by patching port 12 on the patch panel, for example, and then seeing which port gave you connectivity. Label that 12, and then just label the other 13. Alternatively, I could have labeled the ethernet cables on both ends, on the cables themselves, but that would tell me which ones were which. Going through the crawl space makes this easy, and we were in an interior wall. There are other cable runs that might be harder. You might have to run your cables through the attic or on an exterior wall where there is insulation that can make this harder. But with a little caution and creativity, you can get there. So for this project, we're all done. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, ask in the comments.